Oh hey, I switched the camera again this time, just to spice things up a bit. By the way, you ever look at an old video and be like, Man, I want to go back to the past. Well, for that, I made up a brilliant solution. Nostalgia is like Lego Marvel superheroes. Once you have one, you can't go back. It's normal for people to reminisce about the olden days, but really, what makes us feel nostalgic? Especially in the realm of gaming, where pretty much everyone in the current generation has a special feeling towards gaming. And by everyone, I meant this. In this current generation, a lot of games have evoked this feeling that, obviously, gaming is becoming more and more advanced. Detailed graphics, innovative gameplay, and a shit ton of microtransactions. With all of these shenanigans, I find myself often longing back to the good old days. I'm not saying that newer games don't leave a lasting impact the same way games did back then, don't get me wrong, all of the games in this, new in this new generation may as well be listed among the best games ever made, but a number of noticeable games, especially back in 2023, were remakes, Dead Space, Resident Evil 4, and Super Mario RPG just to name a few. These games that were released around the early to mid-2000s are now remade for the current generation. While some things have been improved upon on some of these remakes, there were some changes that made the game not worse per se, but made the game not have the initial impact the original version delivered. There's a certain magic when you played the original version of the game when you're young, and when you play a remastered version or remake of that game, there's still that part that wants to make you play the original instead no matter what generation of gaming you're born in. Water? Eh. Day old water. Please take my water. This is what I call the golden era of gaming dilemma. A dilemma where an individual wants to go back to the past to relive the time when they were young, full of joy, and wants to play the games they love when these games were at their peak. Yes, I know that's a word for that. I just like making stuff up. Now, the golden age of gaming is a bit of a debacle. For some it was during the early 90s, for others it may be way before that. Oh yeah, I too love counting pixels on my screen. Screw Bayonetta, I embrace tradition. But really, the golden age is based on your opinions. There's no right or wrong answer because it can depend on several factors, ranging from how long we've been playing games, which ones we treasure the most, and what circumstances of our lives used to look like. But to speak for the currently reigning generation of our time, I think the golden age of gaming would sit right around the 2000s. The era of emo hairstyles, crappy webcams, and iconic video games, iCarly, and unforgettable memories. After the video game crash in 1983, Nintendo picked up the pace and revived the gaming industry. Since then, Nintendo has been king and one of been the most successful video game companies of all time. They had a ton of competitors, mainly Sega, but one stood out from the rest. By the time of the fifth generation of gaming, Sony unveiled to the world their first foray into the gaming industry, the PlayStation. The PlayStation and PS2 became two of the best selling consoles of all time. During the sixth generation of gaming, Microsoft joined in the competition and unveiled their own gaming console, the Xbox. Around this time, the competition was fierce. Four of the biggest gaming companies, Microsoft, Sony, Nintendo, and Sega, are battling each other out to become the overall best console of this generation. In the end, Sony wins again with their PS2, but this is just the beginning of something bigger. The seventh generation of gaming has come, and the Xbox 360 just became the fastest selling video game console of its time. By the time the PlayStation 3 was released, things spiced up. In came the console war. Console wars are summed up as The way I spend my money is way better than how you spend money. Dude, I just paid my taxes. And nowhere were console wars more than a thing than the Xbox 360 versus the PlayStation 3. Console wars were already a thing back then. Another famous example of this is the SNES versus the Sega Genesis. Ever since the conception of gaming, video game fans have always been against each other based on the consoles they used, but never before were two consoles so perfectly balanced that it's still up for debate which console is better. This battle can be argued via the very minor pros and cons of each console, 
There's so much to argue about this topic, but if you were to ask my opinion, I would pick the 360. Not because it's better than the PS3, it's just that I don't own a PS3. Do you think my opinion matters if this is my condition? In fact, why are you asking me in the first place? I have a lot of love for my Xbox 360. Even though I don't use that often anymore, I have a ton of great memories with it, and nothing can change that. Heading back home after school to play a bunch of games was the childhood I never even knew I wanted. And this is the only thing other than my PSP that I had video game wise. The problem was that I lived in a Filipino household. Anyone would scold me if I even touched a slitter on the television. This bad boy was all I knew about video games. Whenever my dad bought a new game, I would either play that game straight away and for a long long time or place it in my backlog of games. That includes you, Perfect Dark Zero. Eventually, I got my hands on an iPad, and you know what that means? POLITICS! One thing that made the early 2000s memorable for gaming was the internet. YouTube back then was just a website where you could just upload videos for fun. I'm taking this as an opportunity to say that modern YouTube sucks. It was around this time that many popular YouTubers were starting out, making commentaries, Let's Plays, skits, impressions, and so much more. I remember watching a ton of gameplays and whatnot, and all these YouTubers, much like classic video games, had an everlasting impact on the gaming community. And it's not just YouTubers who benefited from making videos and playing games all the time. We also share those benefits, because we grew up watching them. Heck, most of these YouTubers are still uploading videos about video games and some of which may be better than what they were in their past. But that's just a theory, a game theory. Oh. YouTube and many other social media platforms were and still are a great way to spread the video game's popularity. And if a popular content creator makes a video out of it and gets trending, either the video game was a success or the video itself is better than the content it's talking about. Either way, you'd still get some relevancy. Yeah, I can talk smack about Destiny 2 being dog shit. I don't like the hate, I just like attention. Speaking of the internet, online multiplayer during around this time became so big that it was like the golden age. As someone who was pretty young at the time and didn't have full access to online multiplayer, I can't say much for all of this, but I will say that I definitely felt the impact online multiplayer had during the 360 era. It was a blast. I remember hopping on YouTube after school and watching a bunch of Call of Duty funny moments videos and man, those videos are still pretty entertaining to this day. It's not like today where online gaming is pretty much a norm and readily accessible to anyone who has a PC or a paid online subscription, but back then, and this is coming from my view, hopping into online matches felt like a miracle. The internet service back then wasn't great and very few people here in the country play video games because they have better stuff to do, but getting on an online match back then was a dream to behold. Being able to play with other people and around the globe was amazing. One of the biggest challenges for gamers at that time is to suffice not having to play video games all day. Well, lucky for that, we have the portables. Finally, I can watch Family Guy on the go! This is right around the time when turning machines more portable was a huge hit when the iPod was trending and when the iPhone was the hot new thing. It's the same thing with video game consoles. The very thought of playing games on the go was a pretty popular concept done before, but they're outdated or clunky to use in the present times. During this time around, portable video game consoles have received a massive upgrade. To have Uggy the Dog sign up in your commercial, rest in peace. Not a ton of portable consoles were released in this generation, but two did stand out, the Nintendo DS and the PlayStation Portable. I didn't have a DS growing up, but I did have a PSP and it was a blast. Back then, it really felt like I'm bringing a video game console wherever I go. And let me just say this, the PSP is just peak 2000s gaming design. Everything about it just resembles the 2000s era of gaming. Sure, all the other major consoles have that vibe, but something about the PSP, to me, just stands out from the rest. One thing I didn't mention before, I had a universal media disc of Family Guy for the PSP. I watched it when I was a kid, and to keep things short, I did not remember a thing. The 2000s was home to the greatest games ever made. 
There's so many that I might have an aneurysm the moment I start talking about it. Okay, here you go. All of these games left a huge mark on the gaming landscape. Even people born after this generation of gaming cannot deny its impact. But the ones that stuck to me are the ones that define my entire childhood. Black Ops 1 and 2, Forza Horizon, Halo Reach, Castle Crashes, Arkham City, Minecraft, Persona 3, Crazy Taxi, Marvel vs. Capcom, and my holy grail, LEGO Marvel Super Heroes. These titles got me really into gaming. So it was around the late 2000s when I finally invested myself in the internet, looking up what games are about to release even though I know deep down that I cannot afford any of them. This is when I finally learned about gaming related media. The reveal trailers, the press conferences, E3, rest in peace by the way to this absolute legend, you will not be forgotten, especially since I talked about you only once in my life. The advertisements in this era of gaming were unforgettable, pretty much anything that came out of this era is, is considered iconic, especially in the 7th generation of gaming which I consider to be the golden age of gaming. Everything surrounding it is pure of magic, and looking back at it, I really wish I spent more time playing video games back then. It's hard to describe it with mere words because you deeply need to feel that ambiance the 2000s era of gaming delivered. And to top things off, there's one more reason why the 2000s was the best era of gaming, and this is a fact. The piss filter. That's right, that's why the 2000s is the best era of gaming. Video game companies were leaking everywhere.